Hi everyone, my name is Kristen. I'm the local Medtronic rep here at the hospital. I'm gonna be walking you through the Valley Lab FT10 electrosurgery generator. This is our newest machine on the market. It's um, much more consistent energy delivery than the previous um, version, which is called the Force Triad. You may be familiar with that already. The Force Triad would make decisions 3,333 uh, 3, times per second. And just to give you a frame of reference and how this machine has been enhanced, the FT10 makes decisions 434,000 times per second. So it's got um, excellent energy delivery that's very consistent. Um, I'm going to be walking you through this machine so you know the safe and effective use of it. And I'm going to start with the front panel here. So down here you've got your power button. You do have to depress the power button for a couple of seconds and then it will boot up. I've already got the machine turned on. Um, you'll see that it's a green light. When it's off, it's an amber or yellow colored light. So once you press that to turn the machine on, it'll go through a system check, which takes a minute or two. It does this every time it powers up. This next button here is a restore settings button. When you um, want to go back to previous settings, this is the button you can use. For example, if you're working with the same surgeon all day and housekeeping comes in between cases and the machine gets unplugged and you just wanna go back to previous settings from the case before, you can press that and it'll take you right back to how you had it set. The next button is volume. It's a touch screen, so you would just adjust the volume up or down using that volume button. This last button right here is a service and settings menu. This is used by me to do software upgrades and also by the clinical engineering or biomed person here at the hospital to do PM checks. You really shouldn't have to get into this service and settings menu um, ever. You'll notice on this front screen you've got an error right now. It's the REMPAD contact quality error. It just is alerting you that there's no pad currently plugged into the machine. This red light also indicates that there's no pad plugged in. Once you plug a pad in, this would illuminate green, as long as it's got good contact quality on the patient themselves. The pad goes in right here. This is the plug, the port for your REM pad. And like I said, once you've got good contact on your patient and a plug in right here, this will turn green and this arrow right here on the screen will go away. This is a safety feature to make sure that when using monopolar, monopolar energy, you always have to have a grounding pad. Um, and it will not allow you to um, deliver energy to the patient without that closed circuit, if you will. There has to be a pad used. Now I'm gonna go through the four quadrants of the machine. This first one right here is monopolar one. This is for your standard Bovi pencil. Also on the touch screen is where you would set your settings once you plug your pencil in. Um, so that can just be done with a, the touch screen feature. You've got your cut and coag. Within cut, you've got pure and blend. Within coag, you've got fulgurate and spray, so you can select that. It does default to blend and um, fulgurate, I believe. Um, so that's a typical setting that I see. It can be changed to whatever your surgeon preferences are. Also right here is the UFP port. In order to plug in your foot pedal for monopolar use, um, for laparoscopic foot pedal right here. Over here in quadrant two is your monopolar two, which is again for a standard Bovi pencil, and all of the same things from quadrant one are in quadrant two for monopolar two. You can plug in two monopolar pencils at the same time. This machine does have a shared coag setting that can be used. I need to make sure that you understand if you're using two pencils simultaneously, the energy settings are split between those two pencils. So you have two surgeons working at 30-30 setting and they're activating the pencil at the exact same time, that 30-30 setting would be split between the two of them. Also, it's important to note that if they don't activate, if one surgeon doesn't activate and the other one does, 
that one who's activated their pencil will get all 30 delivered to their pencil. So it's just important that, to note that if using shared coag, the surgeons are well aware that this, the, when activating at the same time, it's split, and when they activate alone, they get all the power. Settings may need to be adjusted accordingly because of that. Down here in the other, uh, the third quadrant, we've got bipolar. You can, again, set your bipolar setting with the touch screen. You've got low, medium, and high here. Um, that's your bipolar. And on the fourth quadrant, you've got ligature or bipolar resection. This is a change um, from what you're used to seeing on the force triad generator. Um, with this one, you plug the ligature in and then this wheel will illuminate purple. So you just plug it in and it's ready to go. This machine has tissue effect, tissue sensing technology within it. So what that means is it's actually sensing the tissue impedance and adjusting the um, energy output in real time. So you may have one ligature seal cycle that takes only a second if you're in very thin or avascular tissue. And you may have the next seal take three or four seconds long to complete if it is a vessel that you're sealing or thicker tissue. But it's gonna make that decision for you and adjust the seal cycle accordingly. So it's just plug and play on the ligature. So that's your front panel. We are now going to go to the back panel to finish up. So on the back panel, you'll have, um, you can find your serial number located here on this sticker. You also have four quadrants that correspond to the four quadrants that were on the front of the machine. You've got a monopolar one, monopolar two, bipolar, and ligature bipolar resection here. So if you're plugging in, a monopolar pencil and monopolar one on the front panel and you need a foot pedal then you would want to make sure to plug in your foot pedal to the monopolar one port on the back and that goes for the rest of those as well now that being said if you've got a four pin adapter for your foot pedal that will go here just fine as you can see there's four holes that those pins would fit in However, if your foot pedal is a six pin, which looks like this, then you would need to plug in this pigtail adapter and that would allow you to plug in your six pin foot pedal to that monopolar one. Um, down here, we've got a monopolar one, monopolar two port for smoke evacuation. That's where your interlink cable would go. This is a closed port, it's an ethernet port. This is where I would go in and plug an ethernet cable in to update software, so you won't need to worry about that. This is Wi-Fi enabled, this machine. So in the future, it has Wi-Fi capabilities. Um, we did that so that it could potentially work in an integrated OR system down the road if things are Bluetooth and Wi-Fi um, enabled in an, in an operating room. And then this is your power cord plug-in. One troubleshooting thing I always like to point out is if you're having trouble just getting the machine to turn on, please make sure you first check the cord because sometimes these can get jostled very easily. And that's the first place I would check if you're having trouble turning the machine on. So that's your back panel. And that's it. That's the Valley Lab FT10. Thank you so much.